Hi guys, welcome to the Traveling Epicurean. I am back at one of my very favorite places to be. I'm here with Adele. She's such a passionate cook and I love cooking with her because she's just amazing and you have so many great recipes. So what are we making today, Adele? Spaghetti pie, pastito di spaghetti per Pasqua for Easter. Ooh. In Italy, they made it for Easter, but here I made it every week for my children. Okay, and then your mom used to make it too? My mom made it for Easter. Oh, she made it for Easter. Yes. And then you continued on this tradition. And you yeah. make it for my your children. My children and my grandchildren, they love it. That's wonderful. So, what's in this uh, spaghetti pie? We boil a pound of spaghetti. Okay. And then uh, in one pound you beat of about five eggs. Five eggs. And now it's five yeah. eggs for one? Yeah, for one pound, yeah. Gotcha. And then uh, if you'd like some ham, yes. grated cheese, Great. half a stick of butter, some salt already in a pasta. Gotcha. And just a pepper. Lovely. And did you and put these. pepper into the eggs as well? Yeah, a little bit. But I'm going to put some more in the spaghetti. Okay. So you and put a little spot of olive oil. Yeah. And then you're rubbing with the paper towel. That's exactly how I do mine. But when you have it for the Easter celebration, yeah. is it a side dish to, yeah. to go with the meats? Or yeah. do you have it as a prima piatta? Well, you know, when you got so much on the table, you choose what you want. Okay, we have the pasta. It's al dente, right? Al dente. Tu, tu. Bye bye. Woo, look at all that steam. <laughs> So you said keep the cold water running? Well, cold water running. Why do we do that? The, the heat, or the hot water is no good for the plumbing. Ah. It's always good. We're draining the pasta. I love bucatini because it has the holes in the middle. Yeah, works. Okay, Dal, what are you adding into this pasta? Half a stick of butter. Aha. Oh, that's right. You said half a stick. So that goes in there, and so you put it back in the pot, so it's actually yeah. much easier to mix in here. Oh, that Parmesan smells so good. And then the whisk the eggs go in next. Oh, we stir it. And then we're going to add the eggs in there. Yeah. Okay. A tablespoon okay. of Parmesan. Some pepper. Pepper. Salt, it was already in a pasta when I boiled it. Yes, you boiled it with the salt in the pot, right? Boiled it with the salt, okay. yes. Gotcha. Okay, so last but not least is your ham. Yeah, yeah just to gonna use a little bit okay. in case if somebody doesn't like to have a ham, you know. Isn't that pretty? For how long? Until you see a little crunchy on the top, okay. that's done. Okay, very good. Well, why don't we have some of this Prosecco? I brought some Prosecco because it's festive and this is something that we serve on a festive holiday, right? Yeah, yeah. A Prosecco is a time, so it kind of fit. Um, and I think that Prosecco goes really well with a dish like this. Okay. <laughs> I'm afraid to do this. <laughs> well, you know, what you can do is to put a towel over it. And I, I can do it, if we do it slowly. I'm doing it, I'm sorry. If you twist the top slowly and hold on to it so it doesn't put a hole in your ceiling. <laughs> well, there's a lot of bubbles there. See, it went down to almost nothing there. I'm already bubbling. <laughs> you are bubbling. That's why I love being here. Salute. Salute. Feed your mouth. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Not too sweet. A little dry. Yeah. Delish. Delish. It's going to be great with a spaghetti pie. Are you ready to dance? <laughs> a little prosecco and she gets going. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Those persimmons are absolutely gorgeous. Well, mm -hmm. I know that when I come over here, I can always count on you having these persimmons. So you Italy is big it. for persimmons, but right? You won't believe it. How many different sizes they had in Italy? Really? Oh yeah, from the big ones like this to a little tiny one. 
Really? And then uh, some of it, when they're green, you can have them. You okay. can eat them. I can and then they'll ripen? The oh, you can eat them when they're green? S some of them. Yeah. Okay. I can recognize. I don't see them here. Yeah. When they well, were those green, are gorgeous. They were, they were good when they're green, but otherwise, the other ones, you have to wait. They yeah. They're ripe. Yeah. Too many different sizes. It so was the cheapest fruit. It is. Very good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I it's a little it. more costly here at the stores. But, but I enjoy it. They're so good. They're so good for you too. There's yeah. tons of vitamins in there. I like to I like to show people what you can drink for and especially this is a holiday, yeah. so a lot of times uh, people have something festive, something alcoholic. Also the how non alcoholic, but I like to mm -hmm. you know, um prosecco goes great with this. It's good. Yeah, it it's like a brunch good. item, and okay. Prosecco's or mimosas, you could also make mimosas with Prosecco, right? Yeah. So, um, just something to have. I feel something that gives you... And it warms you up a little bit. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you know, Easter holiday also. It's the, the temperature's changing, yeah. but it's still a little cold, so... That's okay, turn the heat up. <laughs> turn the heat up. <laughs> so we call you Hot Adele. <laughs> Hot Adele. Hot Adele. <laughs> I always work. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so inside an apricot pen. I have to see this. I have is to see fresh? this. Is it fresh? Sometimes it's not that good, but most of the time. Okay. It's okay. We can actually put fresh apricots in our prosecco. Yeah. Like when you make your sangria. Oh, it's so hard to do. You know how long? What show did we make the sangria? Was that the eggplant balls that we did together? And you yeah. made that lovely yeah. sangria? Yeah. Or was that something else? All right, I so I'm gonna put... It's very hard to repeat. How about we make this into a, like a, a Prosecco sangria? <laughs> I can't cry. I'll help you. I Maybe. need a man. Do you yeah. want some, um... Do you need a man? Yeah, we, we didn't send out the invitations. <laughs> that would be nice. All right, this is gonna be delicious. All right. Sometimes I get a hammer and break it. Did I break it? Yeah, that's okay. But you can see oh, it. look at that. There's an almond in there. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> Adele. Oh, Adele. How Adele knows everything. How Adele knows everything. I was the youngest of eight children, so I had to learn everything. You were the youngest of eight children? Oh my goodness, yeah. yeah. I got two sisters left in Italy. That's some fun party though, eight kids. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> you don't want to eat? Get out! <laughs> wow, I love this. Oh, that's delicious. You see the fresh yeah, egg? it almost reminds me of the flavor. Yeah. Is it amaretto flavor? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So that's yeah. incredible. It is good. I always do it. <laughs> that tastes like amaretto. Yeah. How wonderful. Well, thank you. I did not know oh, that there was it. a delicious almond inside that. Let's see. That's why you're a little <laughs> lady. She'll teach you everything. <laughs> Get a little rosy in your cheeks. <laughs> so when the ham is inside? Inside, that would be better. Not like a crunchy. But I love the crunchy. Isn't that oh, gorgeous? Okay. Oh, it's so pretty, Adele. You can see it sizzling on the yeah. bottom there. Oh, you see Bugatini good? Yes, I yeah. love how it's crunchy there. It is there. better, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you ran the knife all around the outer edge. Yeah. Yeah, like this. Just like that. And it, it seemed pretty loose anyways. Yeah. Isn't that pretty? Well, I'll take a side with the ham. Isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh. Oh, that's gorgeous. Beautiful. So you just pick it up. And just bite. And then just bite it like that. It's hot right now. Yeah. So we, we might have to wait for it to cool a little bit. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I love the shape of it and how it holds together. They will hold us together, yeah. Mmm. Mm. Oh, that's so nice. I love that. They're good. Really, really delicious. Mm. But 
thank you so much. Salute. I love cooking with you, Adele. Thank you. You always come up with these fun recipes, and it's so easy to make. You can make, usually you have all these ingredients in the, yep. in the fridge, right? You can yeah, even use bacon, can, actually, yeah. too. Bacon would be probably be good on yeah. there. No, but prosciutto is better. Oh, prosciutto. Italian bacon. Yeah, because we're going to keep it Italian, so you can't go bacon, but prosciutto no. if you have a prosciutto. I always like Italian bacon. Yeah, I do too. Absolutely love it. It's really, really good. Well, you can find this recipe at the traveling epicurean.com. Thank you so much for sharing our recipe here today with Adele. Thank you, Adele, Thank you. your sweetheart. Oh my gosh. Thank you to be with me. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Have a great day. Ciao. Chew the Alamo. Thank you for watching The Travelling Epicurean. A special thanks to here with the Traveling Epicurean. Today it's all about arancini Reuben balls. It's an Italian risotto ball that's usually stuffed with mozzarella and prosciutto and today I'm going to stuff them with diced corned beef. It's your leftovers from St. Patrick's Day and then I put a little twist on it with some cream cheese and jalapeno to give it that popper flavor. Do you remember having poppers years ago? Goodness gracious, those are so good. I used to love those stuffed jalapenos that were breaded and deep fried. They were really, really good. Anyway, so give it a little bit of flavor of that. And baked cream cheese always puffs up and it's gonna be even more creamy and decadent than it already is. And I'm gonna show you how to make some Thousand Island dressing. I make it with a Greek yogurt. So it's very refreshing and delicious. And I put a little uh, horseradish in there to go with the Reuben, to go with the corned beef. It's very delightful. In fact, it's out of this world. You're going to love this, and I'm excited to show you how to make it. Before these. we get the ingredients for the Arancini Reuben balls, let's take a look at how I prepared the corned beef and that delicious risotto. I have the corned beef going here, and a lovely pot of bay leaves, sweet onions, carrots, celery, some peppercorns and this is going to simmer for a few hours so we can make our arancini Reuben balls. They're going to be so good. Okay, we have it all going here. We're sauteing the three quarters cup of uh, sweet onion for the risotto. Once that's translucent, I'm going to add in the arborio rice. I have my chicken stock and that's going to be simmering. You need to add that in when it's super hot into the risotto. I'm going to add in a cup of arboreal rice, which is a starchy rice, and we're just going to stir this. I'm going to turn the heat up to medium, and it's going to saute for about three minutes until it starts to look a little bit chalky. And now we're going to add our wine. I love risotto. You know, you just have to follow certain steps and it's really easy to make. It absorbs at its own rate, so you can't rush that absorption. So once this white wine evaporates, I'm gonna start ladling in hot chicken stock into the risotto. I'm gonna stir it, and then with each addition, I'm just gonna keep waiting for it to absorb, and it'll end up disappearing from the bottom of the pan, then you know it's absorbed, and then I'll add in another layer. makes the risotto nice and creamy. You know, it's a starchy rice, so it's gonna release starches, as well as absorbing all these wonderful liquids. So you have to give it time to do that. Can you see in the bottom of the pan there? So now it's ready for another ladle. So now I'm gonna add the butter in the Parmesan. I'm just gonna pour it all in just like that. Wow, so delicious. All right, we're gonna let this Here's cool now. we're gonna need for arancini Reuben balls that we're gonna make. We have corned beef, risotto, 
mozzarella, Jarlsberg, sautéed and finely chopped jalapeno, couple of eggs, and some seasoned breadcrumbs. So here we go. We're just going to start mixing up all of our ingredients. You know, I'm going to keep some of this uh, plain without the jalapenos just in case my kids want to try it. I've taken out about a third of the mixture and then these are going to be plain. And then I'm going to add in those jalapenos and I'm going to mix those so you in just want to give it another mix. You want to taste the mixture to make sure that you don't need to season it. I did add a quarter teaspoon of salt because it needed just a little bit. Wow, that is so good. I can't wait to start frying these. It's going to be really, really good. All right. And it's not going to be a deep fry. I only have about a half an inch in my cast iron pan. I really love that cast iron pan because it holds the heat. You don't need to have a cast iron pan. It's just what I like to do. So it's all like the seasoned breadcrumbs. It just gives it a little extra flavor. And I use, I think I use the seasoned breadcrumbs with everything. Pretty much with everything. And my kids like it. So if it passes with them, I get to use it. If I want them to eat it, that is. All right, so here we go. Have our eggs. And then I'm going to start making the balls after I whisk this. And then we're going to get these on the stove. It's not going to really take a long time to cook because all the ingredients are already cooked. It's just we're, we're warming it and heating the insides. So when we break them open, it's going to be cheesy and ooey and gooey and delicious. Okay, so I find that an easy way to do this is with a little scooper. And then this way they're all the same. It's just like making meatballs. We're just going to roll them up like this and then we're going to put them on our plate here. So I'm just going to go through all of these and I'm going to keep them separate from the plain ones just in case my kids want to try one and they want another. I'll have, I'll have a few for them. So. Okay, so I'm going to dip the plain ones first. And I'm going to dip it in the egg just so, you know, you don't need to saturate it in the egg. We're just getting a little bit of a coating. And then into the breadcrumbs, roll it around. The egg actually just helps to adhere the breadcrumbs up a tad bit more than if we were to use it without the egg. You could use it without the egg, but I think that here we're just going to put them on the plate right there. And I'm going to continue with all the plain ones here. It's just a small coating. I roll it around gently, put it into the breadcrumbs. And then we're going to get them all lined up. And I'm going to keep going through all of these. And then I'm going to go through all the jalapeno ones. And we'll get those on the plate too. I have my cast iron pan with about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch of vegetable oil. And that's been heating up for about five, ten minutes on low. And then I just turn it up to a, like a, a medium, medium high to get that right temperature. Here is our arancini Reuben balls with a twist. The ones on the right are the plain ones. The ones on the left are the jalapeno ones. And then I have like a little platform here. I just have a cookie tray underneath there and I put down a few pieces of paper towel to soak up the oil. So I may be the sauce gal, but I'm also the eggplant gal too. And I've been frying for over 20 years. So when I fry, I don't check the temperature of the oil because I just kind of get a feel for that kind of thing, frying things for so many years. Um, I'm going to show you how it, I'm going to take the temperature right now. It's going to be around 350. The only time I use a temperature gauge is when I'm making candy because that's very particular on breaking points of um, when you have those certain temperatures in there. So it's, it's not too complicated. It's not a deep frying. We only have about a half an inch of oil here. You just kind of know the temperature. You can take a little bit of water and splash it in there. And if it bubbles a little bit, you know that it's good. If it goes crazy bubbling, then you know it's too hot and to turn it down a little bit. All right, so I have the temperature. It was actually a little bit too high. 
because I was talking away over here, blah, blah, blah. So I took it off the heat just for about two minutes. I stirred it a little bit with a spatula and it came right down. So now it's on three, like 330, 340. And I'm gonna get these arancini balls right in there. So I'm just gonna place them, place them in there. See the little bubbles? And usually when you fry, it comes down to temperature a little bit once you start putting in whatever you're frying. And I'm gonna get all the plain ones done first. Be really careful because the oil is gonna splatter a little bit. These look absolutely delicious and they're turning golden. I can't wait to take these out. So they're done and I'm gonna take them out now. And remember, you have to put them in the refrigerator just for a little bit to cool them before, before we fry them. They look gorgeous. And I'm gonna get our other ones right in there right now. Look how beautiful these are. These are, they're all fried. And remember, you don't want them in there frying for a long time because all those insides are gonna get so ooey and gooey and they're gonna start to flatten out and ooze out. So in and out, just a few minutes. We're gonna put this here and I'm gonna cut it in half so you can see how delicious. Look at the inside of that. Oh my goodness, is that amazing? <laughs> yes, it is. And I'm just gonna have to take a bite of that one. Mm. Oh my goodness, that's heavenly, absolutely heavenly. All right, so let's make that Thousand Island dressing because those dunked in the Thousand Island dressing are gonna be out of this world. They're light and scrumptious and they melt in your mouth. Look at that. So now we're gonna put together that really delicious Thousand Island dressing with the Greek yogurt. It pretty much has all the things that you normally would put in a Thousand Island dressing, although I do use cornichons and I'm gonna show you what those cornichons look like. They're a little extra tart and I think they make a great tartar sauce as well. So that should be one of your staples. You should always have cornichons in your refrigerator because you can use them with so many dips and spreads and sauces. Um, and now as for Greek yogurt goes, anytime you get a recipe that has mayonnaise in it, take out half that mayonnaise and replace it with Greek yogurt. You'll be so surprised on how delicious that is. It's gonna be refreshing, it's better for you, you're gonna really, really love it. You, you'll be excited about that. <laughs> I think you'll be excited about that. This is gonna be our fabulous Thousand Island dressing. We have mayonnaise, Greek yogurt, ketchup, freshly chopped chives and parsley. I have chopped up some cornichons. These are beautiful little cornichons which you should always have in your fridge. They make great tartar sauce. And then this is some sweet relish. I grated some sweet onion there. I have my rice wine vinegar that I love so much and the olive oil. I'm gonna whisk this all together and it's gonna make an amazing Thousand Island dressing. Here are all of our ingredients in our bowl and I'm just gonna whisk this together. And magically, it's going to turn into incredible Thousand Island dressing. I like Tabasco, but I find myself using have two dashes there. I find myself using sriracha. It's a little bit thicker. And boy, you know, it already has all those great flavors. It has the peppers and the spices. How could you go wrong? I'm gonna put in some horseradish. It's a cream style horseradish. So it's not straight horseradish. But this makes the Thousand Island dressing, boy, it just takes it to another level. So, I'm gonna say if I could get out of there, I'm gonna say it's about a teaspoon, maybe a heaping teaspoon. It gives it an underlying flavor. And you know what this is also really good with? It's also incredible with a cob salad with cold shrimp. It's well, here's our plate of arancini Reuben balls. Doesn't that look pretty? It's just amazing. I'm gonna take one of these here and I'm going to slice it in half 
and show you the inside of that. And then we're gonna dunk that. Oh my goodness, look how ooey and gooey that is. Just to die for. And then we're gonna dunk it in the sauce here and we're gonna take a bite of that. You can't get better than that. I can't wait for you to go make these. I'm double dipping, but I can do that because it is my sauce. <laughs> mm, so good. If you don't like these, I'm sorry, I just can't help you. Now you have something to do with your leftover corned beef from St. Patrick's Day. So, get to work. <laughs> wow, those I think are the most amazing risotto balls I have ever had. I can't wait for you to try these. Now you have something really creative and delicious to do with your leftover corned beef from St. Patrick's. Day. You're going to love these and that Thousand Island dressing is so tasty you can have it with everything. Leave your comments down below. I'm dying to hear how you feel about this recipe too. The recipes are at thetravelingepicurean.com. Have a happy St. Patrick's Day.